Good morning and welcome to a new video. I did a poll on Instagram a couple of weeks ago asking if you would be interested in seeing what my workplace looks like and the answer was overwhelmingly positive. So this is what I'd like to share with you today. My workspace is a little corner of our bedroom and I'm so incredibly grateful that we have enough space in that room to accommodate both of our bed and all my mess. My desk used to be in the living room, which gave me more space to work, but the thing is that I ended up sitting at my desk for the whole day without looking around me, um, taking breaks and not paying attention to my daughter. So. I decided to move it to another room where I do the computer work that needs to be done and then I close the door once I'm done and then spend time with my family. This requires a lot of discipline for me because when, once I start working on a project, I really have a hard time stopping and I could work hours and hours without taking any breaks. So having my daughter at home with me is really good for me because it forces me to take breaks and not overwork myself too much. You might think that my little corner is very organized or on the contrary that is quite messy so before we get started I'd like to let you know that my creativity is like a moving tornado so I've tidied my desk quite a bit before recording this footage otherwise I wouldn't be able to show you anything. So this room is a constant work in progress. Most of the furniture and the things that you will see in this video were thrifted, like the chair, the carpet, and the little box on my desk, for example. Ideally, I would have a handmade table made out of repurposed wood, um, but my hands are not skilled with the art of wood carving yet, so we will see that in the future. I like to surround myself with elements from the outside world because nature is everything to me. So it's really important that I have natural items displayed around. Some pieces were bought from bigger brands and it's not always easy to find exactly what you want and when you need it from the thrift store. So I link as many things as I can in the description box down below. And lastly, handmade pieces from me and from amazing artists. Pieces of pottery and candles are always around. At the moment, I am assembling my yarn winder in an upward position. In order for it to work, I need to move it to this side of the furniture so then I can have my bowl winder next to it. The thing is that I thought that um, that was the best setting for winding yarn, but it turns out that you need to have little bit of distance in between the ball winder and the yarn swift because if you don't the tension is not right and then it just doesn't work properly 
So what I ended up doing here is to put my beloved yarn winder on the chair um, so then I have more space in between the two devices, which ended up working way better. Um, both of these tools are handmade. The Swift is um, from a maker in Ukraine and the ball winder is from Strauss Fiber Equipment and I will provide the links for both of these tools down below. The very good thing about the Swift is that you can um, put it in an upward position and you can also lay it flat on a table. So depending on the amount of space that you have at home, you can use it in both of these ways. The yarn winder is really good as well. As you can see, it can also be attached securely on a piece of furniture if you have enough space uh, for that. Um, so then it is more secure and you will end up with a more consistent winding for your ball of yarn, which is better. As you can see, my working space is a tiny corner of the room. It consists of the piece of furniture that is on the left. It holds all of my yarn, which is organized in brown pepper bags for the most part, to both keep everything organized and hopefully to prevent moths from finding their way to my precious skins. This piece of furniture is the most recent acquisition to my working space. I got it at a local garden center and it works perfectly well for my needs. It's not too high, which means that I have counter space to display some inspirational pieces and keep my stitch markers away from tiny little hands. I'm someone that gets stressed and anxious quite easily and don't always have the tools to managing those things. So I'm trying my best on a daily basis to try to remove any, any triggers. And I found that surrounding myself with natural items and incorporating luminotherapy and aromatherapy to my daily practices have had a positive effect on my stress levels. The second main area in my workspace is my desk which is where i keep all of the bits and pieces that i need for my everyday work as i use it for anything from like emails to pattern writing video editing chart making etc the other half of my desk is dedicated to the tools that i need i mentioned earlier that i tend to be a very messy person so Having this chest of drawers is helping me tremendously in managing all of the mess that I tend to make. Each drawer has its designated purpose, so I can keep everything neat and organized. Next, I have my 
ebook reader which I have been using a whole lot lately and I also have a sketching notebook next to it which I use whenever I have a new idea that I need to, to sketch out. Then I have my little pattern writing organizing system thingy um, which I have been using over the past couple of months I would say and this has been a really good tool in my writing in my pattern writing journey if you will because I used to keep all of my pattern notes in different notebooks or on sticky notes and then I would end up losing the papers themselves so with this little tool I've been able to keep everything in one space and organize them by um, by patterns so I've been able to write notes uh, the pattern notes themselves some charts um, I've been able to keep track of all of the information that I need regarding test knitters um, so yeah it's a, it's a really really good system for uh, the way my brain works I guess next is this little wooden box which I thrifted in Latvia a couple of years ago and it holds my tarot deck cards which is from the Holos Valley on Instagram and I feel very connected to this deck so um, I use it on a daily basis and a couple of times during the month Next is my little desk drawer, um, which was a complete disaster before recording this video. So I had to empty it completely and organize it um, just a little bit for the sake of this video. <laughs> um, so it holds some of some pens on the side. I have a bowl with stuff that don't have a home and I have some stickers and my my calendar and also my bigger needle case which I use constantly um, and I also have my little mini Chiago set which I keep in the chest of drawers that is on the left side of the desk um, I don't keep my knitting cables in any of those cases. I just keep them separately in um, a little drawer. I try to keep the needles in their cases um, so then it's more organized and easier for me to, um, to see where things are. Before we continue with the studio tour, I'd like to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've been using Skillshare for over a year now, learning new things and finding new inspiration while working on my simple knitting. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes on a myriad of different topics from makers, artists, and business owners. This month, I've been wanting to learn new skills and techniques about filmmaking, so I've been spending some time in the company of Jordi van der Poot with his class about mastering cinematic composition in video and film. I'm only halfway through the course, but I've already picked some useful information along the way which I'm going to use and practice in my next recordings. If you want to check out Skillshare, they are offering the first 1000 people that click the link in my description box a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And then an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. I briefly mentioned that I now keep my yarn in brown paper bags in this new cabinet. And it so happened that I 
as I was about to start recording the bit to show you my stash, a new yarn portal arrived and this was my latest order of Nutiden yarn. So I had to stop everything and unbox it, um, play with it a little bit and, and just hold it for a little while and display it around. Now for the stash. As the time passed, more and more Nutiden found its way to my home. So it holds a very, very special place in my yarn stash. I've tried to organize things um, in brown paper bags for the most part, but um, the newly acquired yarn hasn't been sorted yet. So I've tried to keep everything on the upper shelf. Over the years, I have started curating a very well-loved yarn stash with, with yarns that share the same characteristics. A lot of them are naturally dyed and they are all non-superwash. The bottom part of the cabinet holds a few more skeins of yarn, but also um, my knitting books, which I've collected over the years. There's um, more technical books. Um, there's some magazines where my work has been published in. There's books that I have acquired in different yarn shops that I have visited, uh, some that I got online for inspirational purposes. And yeah, just I just love having this little collection of books uh, right by my side so whenever I need, I don't know, to feel inspired or to look up um, a specific technique, I have these books ready uh, for me to pick. And that's pretty much everything from me. I hope that this video was somehow interesting and or inspirational to you. And if you have any questions regarding the things that I have shown you or mentioned in this video, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will try my best to answer. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful end of your year if, if I don't upload a new video before um 2021 um stay safe and happy knitting to you